Hi, I'm Dave Eicher, editor of Astronomy Magazine. Today, in Astronomy's video series, I'm going to talk about Galileo and his early use of the telescope. Over the last months of 1609, Galileo was electrified by viewing sky objects and made numerous observations and discoveries. By March 1610, he compiled many of these in his Sidereus Nuncius, the sidereal or starry messenger. On the moon, he carefully studied mountains, circular features we now know as craters, the darkness of the terminator washing over the moon's surface, and many other features. Galileo inferred Earth is like the moon, a body shining by reflected sunlight. Galileo was the first to systematically observe sunspots. He began watching them in 1610 by simple projection and drew them frequently. He carefully studied not only the appearances but also the motions of spots. With his observations, he attacked errant notions about sunspots and by 1612 argued they were on the sun's surface rather than being microplanets, which some thought, as shown by their speeds and separations. Famously, Galileo also observed Jupiter and was stunned to see little points of light that obviously played about along a single plane. On January 7, 1610, he watched Jupiter carefully and saw two stars arranged in an east-west line for the first time. Galileo's famous notebook sketches of what came to be known as the Galilean satellites convinced him the stars were really moons orbiting the planet. Galileo's realization that Jupiter was a solar system in miniature led to his 1613 theory of the satellites and the idea that they were moons similar to Earth's moon. In one of the most important observations Galileo made, he watched the changing phases of Venus beginning in October 1610. Galileo realized that if Venus were above the Sun, it would appear as a crescent. If it were below the Sun, it would appear as a disk. Because it changed, Galileo demonstrated it orbits the Sun. This, of course, along with the Galilean satellites and other observations, had big implications for Copernican theory. On July 25, 1610, Galileo described first his observation of Saturn. He hoped to find moons as with Jupiter, but instead he saw an olive-like globe with distinct ears or handles. After repeatedly observing the planet and wondering about its nature, he concluded that Saturn was a triple star. He sent a mysterious anagram to record his discovery without giving away its nature. Stung by repeated requests for a decoding, Galileo went public in Florence three months later. The anagram read, I have observed the farthest planet as a triple sun. Later, however, he saw the handles changed over time and after tracking them could predict their appearance and disappearance. But he never came to know them as rings. Improving his telescopes over time, Galileo abandoned the moon and planets and focused on stars. He was the first to track the Milky Way and see its band as being composed of innumerable stars. He found their images in the telescope were enlarged much less than were planets. He found many groups and clusters of stars and was charmed by their appearance, such as the Pleiades and Taurus. He studied Orion carefully and drew diagrams of the clusters he saw in various places. He carefully noted that stars did not move relative to each other, as did some of the brighter bodies. In 1609 and 1610, Galileo led a scientific revolution that altered how humans think about the universe. He commenced a process of logical thinking that had not taken place scientifically before his day. Rigorously trained as a mathematical thinker, Galileo recognized in his telescopic observations that mathematics was the language of the cosmos. He drove world thinking on its first step from the ordinary to the extraordinary, as with this 1609 list in his handwriting, which lists chickpeas, rice, pepper, sugar, but also sophisticated supplies for his lens-making shop. With Galileo's initial observations, the world was changed and has never been the same since. And that's the story of some of Galileo's most important early telescopic observations. Until next time, I'm Dave Eicher, editor of Astronomy Magazine. I'll see you out under the stars.